Alter. You can see it coming up the other side. The next part of the video is that we've, we're going to make a, a former to, uh, to cast the, um, the white metal around the bearing. So we've tinned the bearing there, both sides. There they are, all tinned uh, correctly around the edge there, etc. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make this former and we're going to put the two bearings together with a spacer in between which allow us to pour the metal in and achieve the bearing. Now just let's have a look at this this former that I've made up. It consists of a bit of mild steel. I've put that in the lathe and I've turned it down to a diameter here which is equal to the diameter of the outside of the of the, the flange on the bearing. See that? Now normally that would be just a flange out here. It's quite easy to establish that diameter. If you once you pick up a bearing you can just put your verniers across there and say well it'll be about that width, it'll be about that and turn it in there. Now the depth the depth there wants to be a little bit deeper because we're going to face a bit off this when we are, when we finally bore the bearing in the lathe. So we can make that a little bit deeper than what it is. And we turn a spigot in the middle here. Now that is to accommodate the shaft size in the center. Now we've given that five millimeter difference. The, the, um, the diameter is 46 millimeters we've turned that to 31 it's just a piece of pipe turned it to 31 millimeters diameter that's five mil smaller than the actual crankshaft pin and I've just welded a piece of steel on the bottom put in the lathe drilled and tapped it half inch Whitworth that particular but it can be any thread it doesn't have to be anything special and I've drilled a hole in the metal there to take the bolt and so we can put the bolt in there, tighten that up, and there it is, all in place. Now I've then turned up or, or fabricated, filed up these two little spaces. Now the shims that are between the two bearings are about that thickness, about 3 mil. So I've got a piece of 3 mil flat and that can be smaller or bigger depending on your size of your bearings and what you um, what sort of space you put on your bearings. I generally put uh, laminated shims. Here we have some here they're Model A Ford. They're Model T, Model A again you can buy these from uh, Snyder's in, or the, the, the other suppliers. Now they come as laminated shims. They've, they're a series of... Get one out. No, I can't. They're a series of um, laminated... Here we are here, yes. They're a series of fine laminations and they're made up of one and a half thousand of an inch shims glued together and the idea is that if you can put those on your bearings, if you want to adjust your bearings, well you can peel one off and then tighten it up and then the bearing is closer. So if you white metal a set of bearings like this and you have these laminated shims on it, you should get something like 500,000 uh, kilometers out of each bearing before you need to grind the crankshaft again. This is why I prefer this method of, of um, bearings on your main on your big ends and main bearings. It's easy to adjust them and we'll show you how to do that when we come to turn the bearings. So we'll just assemble this up 
there it is there we put I've drilled those holes there made that fit put that in there and you can see I've got a little bit of a nick in there to go into the groove in the bottom there just assemble that up okay then we can press that in there That will go into that spot, there, into that groove. The bearing is now flat on that surface. We've got down there. Tap that up a little bit. There it is, fitting all right. We now get our tool makers clamps. And now we can just tap that into the center there. Get that central. Move those two pieces in there. And we've got that in place. And now what we do, we take it over to the welder and we just put a tack on those two points there. And that'll hold that together while we disassemble it. I'll go and do that. Okay. Okay, we've welded that up now. Tacked that up. And now we can loosen that off. And there we have it. Now what we have to do now is just weld it through here so that that's a nice fitting. We'll go ahead and do that now. Right, we just run a couple of fillet wells down there and uh, I got the angle grinder and grind them, just ground them out, sort of flush. It doesn't matter whether there's a little bit of metal on there or a little bit of uh, metal protruding from there because that's got to be turned off anyway. Same with the back. So it's nice and strong. Fits into there. Now it doesn't have to be a good fit down the bottom here. What I really want is to be able to pour the metal in one side and it comes through the bottom and up the other side so that it finds its own level. So. There's a space there underneath those and round the corner. You can see they're a little bit loose there. That's okay. And that fits nice and square there. And the bolt comes up from the bottom and f puts it all firmly in place. Bring it round to there. And there we are. That'll go in there like so. Other bolt the other side. And it'll fit right up there. We'll be able to clamp it all together. But before we do, before we clamp it up finally, we've just got to seal it off. Obviously, the fit on this isn't going to be too good. There's going to be a bit of bit of uh, space there, 
and we've got a few holes there to plug in.